the U.S. Army Super Secret Counterterrorism Team, 1st Special Forces Operational Detachment Delta, is hands down one of the world's top counterinsurgency squads. However, they weren't the pioneers in this game. Delta, famous as it is, wasn't actually the first American anti-terror squad out there. That title belongs to a unit that's pretty much forgotten now. They called it Blue Light. Colonel Charlie Beckwith, a former Green Beret and the creator of Delta Force, came up with the concept for a specialized counterinsurgent unit. His inspiration struck after he completed an exchange tour with the British Special Air Service, better known as the SAS, leading him to envision a US counterpart to the SAS. As insurgencies started to become a bigger problem in the 1970s, it became super important for the US military to put together a top-notch team that could handle these threats with serious skill and effectiveness. The colonel went on to pitch his bold idea to the Pentagon, focusing on Army higher-ups and fellow colonels who had the power to greenlight funding for this unique unit. Beckwith encountered pushback, especially from the senior officers who weren't keen on Delta having its own funding and independence. Instead, they believed it was crucial for Delta to maintain its place within the existing hierarchy of the asymmetric warfare community, specifically within the U.S. Army's Special Forces. In contrast, Delta would establish a direct connection through the Department of Defense to the President's office, completely bypassing the Special Forces. Adding fuel to the fire among senior officers was the fact that Delta would have the liberty to recruit whomever they pleased, including highly skilled Green Berets from the existing groups. Inside the Army, some behind-the-scenes politics led the Special Forces' top brass to make a move. They decided to set up their own counterinsurgent unit before Delta Force could officially take off, claiming it was a temporary fix while Delta got its act together. But deep down, they hoped it would become a more permanent deal. A brand new team called Blue Light recruited operators straight from the 2nd Battalion of the 5th Special Forces Group to kick things off. They were placed in a subunit where they get trained up on all the skills needed for counterinsurgency missions and get ready for the real deal. Colonel Bob Montel took the reins to lead this promising unit. The unit named Blue Light could have been chosen randomly, or it might have been a connection to a slang term used by American radar officers. In this context, to Blue Light meant detecting a contact with radar, symbolizing the ability to uncover an enemy's location. Despite being the size of only a company-sized unit, Blue Light would continue to receive its funding from Special Forces. It would also prioritize additional training for its members, including airborne and dive training, as well as intensive weapons courses and more. Officers figured that since Green Berets were already well-trained in asymmetric warfare, they'd be ready to jump into action much faster than Delta. Beckwith estimated it would take two years to get Delta going. The traditional Special Forces leadership felt that they could handle counterinsurgency duties within the Special Forces community with blue light. Delta existed outside of that bureaucracy with a direct line to top U.S. Department of Defense and the President. Delta, therefore, represented a political threat in the minds of some Special Forces commanders. In the meantime, Beckwith and his crew got busy designing and training the first Delta Force members. They were fully aware of the risk that Blue Light could come in and disrupt the early stages of Delta before it even got going. Blue Light received a substantial boost from seasoned operatives who had extensive combat experience. Among them was Joseph Kinkati, a Green Beret from the Vietnam era. Later, he would lead the John F. Kennedy Special Warfare Center and school and played a pivotal role in developing the curriculum that all Special Forces candidates follow today. Bit by bit, Delta Force took form over at Fort Bragg, North Carolina, and as the 1970s wrapped up, it was all set for action. Blue Light was stationed there too, and you could practically cut the rivalry between these two units with a knife. Once Delta was officially up and running, Blue Light quietly disappeared into the background, and by 1978, it was no more. The folks who used to be in Blue Light either found themselves in other units within the Army Special Forces, or decided to call it a day and retire from service. Not one to miss out on a chance, Beckwith extended invitations to Blue Light operators to give Delta Force a shot. A few of these former members from the disbanded unit aced the selection process and successfully completed the challenging operator training course, earning their spots as Delta Force operators. Former officers from Blue Light would later be involved in the planning of Operation Eagle Claw, the mission that tragically fell short in its attempt to rescue American hostages in Iran in 1980. But if you found this content entertaining or helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more content like this one. And thanks for watching.